I am not alone at all, I thought. I was never alone at all. And that, of course, is the message of Christmas. We are never alone. Not when the night is darkest, the wind coldest, the world seemingly most indifferent. For this is still the time God chooses. In the midst of the strangest of all years and of end of year weariness, we begin the Advent journey. We read again the ancient stories and light a candle in the darkness to celebrate that we're not forgotten after all, that we were never alone, not ever. Huddled around our technology, we declare our intention to live as if the greatest gift in the world were about to be placed into our hands and as if the giver has understood our deepest needs, our most heartfelt prayers. Like Mary, may we be surprised by our calling. Like Simeon and Anna, May the years increase our faith. Like sleepy shift workers on a hillside, may our eyes be opened. Like Joseph, may we listen to our dreams. For, For this, this season, season requires, requires our creative, creative imagination. imagination. There is a presence in our world that asks to be seen. Who will stay awake? There is a coming to our world that seeks a welcome. Who will offer hospitality? Even, Even now, now, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is moving, moving towards us. Advent makes space in our lives. And in the spaces we watch and wait. We look and listen. Christ, Christ comes. comes. Hi there. Hi, hi Apple Yard family. Hey, come in. I have a Christmas message for you for and I would like you to open it up and have a look inside. Can someone take that envelope for okay. me? Okay. Fabulous. Open it up guys. What's got inside? So have a look inside and uh, tell me what you've got. Go on, get it open. Quickly. Okay. Okay. Letters. They've got some letters. Let's get them out there. Let's get them out and have a look. What have we got? Uh, oh, what have you got there? What word can you make using all these letters? I Should we stick them up here? Yeah, that's like a here. good idea. What's that then, boys? That's a. Huh? Then we got a. Then we've got what have we got next. Stick them up. Oh. Oh. Stick that on there like that, yeah. Oh. Then we've got an air then. Just on Put your air. You got an air? And then we've got a. Huh. 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 Hope, the word hope means you're really hoping something that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Anyone else? So you could kind of hope, I suppose, that you're going to get a decent Christmas present. Yeah. yeah. But it's a desire for something, so it's I really present. want it not to rain. Yeah. Maybe. Hey guys, I've got cool. another one here, another envelope here for you to open that might oh, explain hey, Dan, and help us one. understand a little bit more. You open this one up, Dan. The one that Ruben's got. You open that one up. Can you hold that? Yeah, I'll hold that. You open that up. <laughs> Let's get this out of here. Go on, Dan, get it open. 
What have we got inside that one, Dan? Open it up, mate. That's it. What is it? Right. So what does the start in the Christmas story oh, make oh, you oh, think oh. of? Can you can you tell me? Um, um, it means it means when Jesus was born, God was sh shining. Um, God's star shines so bright. All oh, right. So what are you going to say, Ruben? What do you think? Um, it means. Um, I think it means God is alive. Yeah. Sure. Um, um, I I think I think um, that God, God, God is in the heart and and everything is inside of us. Well, yeah, when cool. I think of the star, I think of when the wise men came because the star guided them to Jesus. Yeah, well, um, they were hoping to find then something then, weren't they? Perfect. That's wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Well, we're going to go and explore these ideas some more on our Hub Kids Advent and uh, Advent journey. So thanks, guys. We'll uh, catch up with you again sometime before Christmas. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. This familiar lighting of Advent's first flame releases again the memories of seasons past. A task repeated not because of mere tradition, but to redeclare a timeless message of hope. Uncertainty and fear may hold nations in their grip, while rulers and power seekers argue and accuse. But we choose to remember that our future rests not in any earthly treaty, but God's eternal purpose. In the midst of this world's turmoil and uproar, we receive God's invitation to be still, to recall and retell the timeless stories whose truths have breathed, breathed hope into every era of history. In this moment, we grasp the opportunity not to work out solutions or be convinced of any plan, but be stilled by the knowledge of who our God is. For in the midst of similar turmoil and ambition, God was found as one of us. You'll hear me refer to C.S. Lewis often. I find the more I read about him, the more he has to say about our times and our ways, even though he actually writes in a very different wartime context. His writing is oftentimes dense, but here in Mere Christianity, he talks about the hope that we have in the eternal purposes of God. Hope is one of the theological virtues. This means that a continual looking forward to the eternal world is not, as some modern people think, a form of escapism or wishful thinking, but one of the things a Christian is meant to do. It does not mean that we are to leave the present world as it is. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. The apostles themselves, who set on foot the conversion of the Roman Empire, the great men who built up the Middle Ages, the English evangelicals who abolished the slave trade, all left their mark on earth precisely because their minds were occupied with heaven. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. Aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you will get neither.
ring a bell, call a parade, get this on the evening news, let everything on earth and beneath the earth and above it, and everything in the sea too, from the oak to the octopus, bees, bears, birds, buffalo, bacteria and human beings, take notice. We have an announcement. The waiting is over. The gap is breached. Tell the lame they will dance and the blind they will see rainbows. Tell the oppressed they will be free and the poor they will be rich. Tell the meek their earth is ready. Tell darkness its days are numbered and its minions to flee. Tell the warmongers that peace will overtake them and cover their battle tanks in dust. Let the wind shake the forest and ripple praise across the grasslands. Let the mountain tops sparkle with joy. Your God is for you. Your God is with you. Let all creation sing his welcome. But whisper it, the baby is sleeping. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshippers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Saviour and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Misa, I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. O oh God, my rock, I cry, why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts break my bones. They scoff, where is this God of yours? Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Saviour and my God. Christmas cancelled. It must have crossed your mind. And if not cancelled, then altered or adjusted, messed up, maybe even beyond recognition. We'll just have to wait and see how the new plans work out for us. But it got me thinking, what would it take? What would have to happen for us to feel as though Christmas were cancelled? Now, in our family, like for all of us, we have a few traditions. And some of those aren't going to happen this year, for sure but others will be compromised. But is that Christmas cancelled? If we can't get our favourite recipe or eat our favourite food, if we can't sing our favourite carol or go to the cinema or the pantomime or complete our traditional walk or gather in large numbers, if we can't go to the pub on Christmas Eve or whatever it is that is your tradition that will be affected this year, is that Christmas cancelled? Is Christmas just a collection of our favourite treats and events, of festive niceness and seasonal celebrations? Is Christmas that fragile? Surely it is more robust than that. We speak each year of the importance of unwrapping the meaning of Christmas from, from all the hype and attentions and from all those things that surround the celebrations. And we talk about getting to the heart of the real Christmas, 
and maybe this year as we're forced to dispense with so much of the the wrapping and the froth we are faced with the truths about Christmas as it really is. The rest of the year has been a shocker. Maybe it's not a surprise that Christmas 2020 will be too. Even the Oxford English Dictionary, who normally put out one word of the year, have this year put out 16 because it is, and I quote, an unprecedented year. Even that word unprecedented has been used in an unprecedented way since March, hasn't it? The psalmist then, in his struggle with his situation, which Roe read for us, isn't known to us. He too wrestles with some fundamental questions. Questions within himself and questions from others in what seems to be, for him at least, an unprecedented situation. And whatever it is he's facing, which gives rise to Psalm 42 and 43, at the heart of the psalmist's anguish is a question that's in his heart and yet found on the lips of his scoffing mates. It's the awful question which is really at the centre of all of our hardship, all of our suffering, all of our pain, and it comes up twice in Psalm 42. Where is this God of yours? Where is this God of yours? You see, they suppose God is inactive or, or dead or just doesn't care or else he would act, wouldn't he? And perhaps that's a sentiment we have felt and questions that we have had, even if we haven't been brave enough to ask them out loud. We have this common sense view that if God were, well, God, this kind of stuff wouldn't be happening that he should at least step in and save the day like some kind of cosmic hero. But where is he? And yet the psalmist speaks of hope. He says, I will put my hope in God. And then, and then later when things get so bleak for the, the chosen people, in the Hebrew Bible we still have this, this small voice, sometimes so quiet, it's a whisper. Hope in God. He has not forgotten. He will come. He will act in an unprecedented way. Keep the faith and keep watch. And then, well, then there's silence. 400 years of nothing. No revelation, no action, and seemingly no hope. Rome expands across the, the known world, occupies Palestine, and hope, well, hope is for fools. No one is going to trust. Nothing is going to happen. But then, once again, hope rises in a priest called Zechariah, in his wife called Elizabeth, and then in a maiden called Mary and her betrothed called Joseph. And little by little we realise, as we end the story, as Henry Longfellow writes, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. You see, God hadn't forgotten. It turns out that he wasn't defunct or deaf or ignoring or even dead. God was waiting for the time that God himself had appointed before the creation of the world to come, to act, to save, to move into the neighbourhood. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. You see, we know we're not God, but we forget it. And we think we know better than God. And that's why it's so hard to follow God's way of love, because we love constantly listening to our own advice on how to live. Meister Eckhart wrote, If you think of anything God might be, he's not that. Because God is unprecedented, he is other, he is different, he is unimaginable, and yet he makes himself imaginable by moving into our neighbourhood. And we so often think that we know how things should pan out. Our prayers are testament to that. We tell God what he should be doing, how he should act, 
And it turns out God doesn't need our help after all. God's plan all along was not to get us to do his bidding, but to roll his own sleeves up, as it were, and enter into the fray, enter into the world of pain and fear and disease in such a way that gives credibility to that word unprecedented. To usher hope into what seems like a hopeless situation, such hope that the psalmist can face his times and even his friends with trust and with praise. Such hope that Mary and Joseph, that Zechariah and Elizabeth can face their monumental life changes with all its ramifications with joy and peace. Such hope that we might be able to face this season, uncertain as it is, trusting that God is not dead, nor does he sleep. He's got this, and he's got us. And yes, the things we'll miss, and the things that will make different Christmas this year will be so unusual, perhaps. But maybe they'll help us press into the things of God. Remembering that the one who came to walk this earth with humankind still walks with us through every circumstance and every situation, even unprecedented Christmases. Christmas cancelled? Not a bit of it. The word became human and made his home among us. Maybe this year, more than any year, will have the eyes of faith to see his unfailing love and faithfulness. Maybe this year, unprecedented as it is, will be less distracted so as to see his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Dear Lord, we start our Advent journey in a year which has been dark and difficult. The light of your love continues to give us hope. We thank you that we have the inner knowledge that you are with us and in the midst of everything. The light of your love continues to give us hope. We thank you that you know us, our abilities and our needs. The light of your love continues to give us hope. We thank you for the love that sent your Son to the earth for all mankind. The light of your love continues to give us hope. We thank you for the gift of forgiveness, so selflessly given. The light of your love continues to give us hope. Let us be still and quieten our hearts and minds as we take the time to tell you our worries and concerns. We ask that we hear you as you answer. We pray for the world as the struggle with COVID continues and we give you thanks for the selfless ways people are generously working to help others and for the willingness to change how we are living for the sake of everyone. We give you thanks for those who work caring for others, and we are mindful of the risks they are exposed to. Lord, we praise you for the skills and the capabilities 
of the scientists and the relentless work involved in developing vaccines and treatments for COVID and other illnesses. We commit to you, all who are exhausted and have so much more to do, as we pray for wisdom for all who are making decisions across this world. God of light, shine forth. Show us how to bring hope to others. God of mercy, help us to comfort your people and share in their joy. God of hope, make us an Advent people, preparing the way for life in all its fullness. Amen. A blessing. So let us enter Advent in hope, even hope against hope. Let us see visions of love and peace and justice. Let us affirm with humility, with joy, with faith, with courage. Jesus Christ, the life of the world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.